I want to personally welcome you to the inaugural hooding ceremony of the UNT Dallas College of Law. We are especially honored that so many family, friends, and special guests can be with us today to help us celebrate our pride in our graduates. At this time, will you please rise if you are able and remain standing from the procession. I now invite to the podium the inaugural president of the UNT Dallas College of Law Student Bar Association, Taj Walker, to lead us in the singing of our national anthem, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming at the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet And uh, please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning. Let's try that one more time. Good morning. Good morning. Wonderful, wonderful. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the inaugural hooding ceremony at the UNT Dallas College of Law.
My name is Royal Ferguson, and I have been honored to be the inaugural dean of this great school. And it's an honor and privilege to be with you here today and to be with these amazing graduates. The, the occasion that brings us here today is not just one of the highlights of the academic calendar. It marks the beginning of many professional achievements for the members of our 2014 inaugural class. I am delighted that each of you, all of you, family, friends, faculty, staff, and especially our students have joined us for this historic moment as we gather to celebrate the achievements of the students being hooded today. I would like to recognize some special guests in the audience. If you would please stand as I recognize your group and if everyone will hold their applause till we're through and finished. First, will all current and past judges please rise to be recognized? Please rise. Thank you so much. I do want you to know that these wonderful judges have been so fine, so great, so embracing of our students. They have been with us all the way, and we are deeply grateful for you. Thank you so much. Now, will all elected officials rise and be recognized? <laughs> good show, good show. We thank you for your great help to us and to our students. And now will all bar representatives, all lawyers, please rise and be recognized. <laughs> These lawyers have been mentors to our students. They have been with us from the beginning and they have made such a difference in our law school and our legal education. We are very grateful to you. And next, will our colleagues representing the UNT system and campuses please rise and be recognized? I know you're out there. Thank you. We have been very fortunate to have an enormous amount of support uh, from the UNT system and the campuses of UNT. Now will all UNT Dallas and UNT Dallas College of Law faculty, staff, and students in attendance to celebrate with our candidates, please rise and be recognized. Thank you, please be seated. Joining me on the stage today are some very special people that I would like to especially acknowledge. If you'll just raise your hand as I mention your name, Senator Royce West. <laughs> Chairman Dan Branch. <laughs> Chancellor Lee Jackson. Vice Chancellor and General Counselor, our lawyer, Nancy Footer. <laughs> President Bob Mon. <laughs> Provost Betty Stewart. <laughs> and Vice President of University Ad Advancement, Monica Williams. Thank you so much for joining us today on this special occasion. Now, an integral part of any law school, really a central part, of course, is the faculty, the staff, and the administration that serve our students. I would like to take a moment to recognize the faculty and members of the Dean's Cabinet representing the UNT Dallas College of Law. Please hold your applause until all parties are recognized. Uh, will you hold your hand if you are an associate dean? Please hold your hand. There should be two of those. <laughs> <laughs> Would our assistant deans raise their hands? 
Will our directors and assistant directors please raise your hand? Would you please give all of these a round of applause? In the process of their education, our candidates have had the benefit of learning from and interacting with our excellent faculty. We are very proud of those who serve our students every day. I've got to tell you this one quote. Uh, a student uh, who was a veteran, Army veteran, uh, told me that what he learned in the Army was that we don't care how much you know until we know how much you care. Uh, we have over 40 veterans at this school, and that's a source of great pride to me. But our faculty cares. They care for our students. They more than care, they love them. And I'm really appreciative of this faculty. I would now like to recognize my colleagues, the UNT Dallas College of Law faculty. They have been teachers, mentors, and guides with these students on this long journey. We are pleased and proud to share this moment with you. Today, you move from being students to our colleagues and friends. Will the faculty please rise to be recognized by our candidates? Starting a law school uh, is a monumental endeavor, perhaps more monumental than I thought it would at the beginning. <laughs> it has a lot of moving parts, and there are a lot of people that make it possible. A lot of people make, make it possible by working really hard. This law school would not be possible without the next two people, the next two speakers. And let me just mention before they come up here that a law school, a new law school, could not hope for stronger support from its system and from its university than this law school has had. The two men that are here today have been with us from the beginning. They have never faltered. We have had good times and bad. We have had struggles, but they've never stopped supporting us and believing in us. We are very grateful to them. So first you're going to hear from our chancellor, Lee Jackson. After his remarks, you will hear from our president, Bob Mong. And then finally, you're going to hear from our outgoing SBA president, Joshua Griffin. Chancellor Jackson. Thank you, Dean. Well, this is a beautiful room to host a beautiful event. Uh, it is so beautiful, I'm almost moved to sing some opera for you. <laughs> but in the interest of brevity and your stomachs, I won't do that. Um, but I do want to talk about what is unique about today's event. Every commencement is a celebration of the accomplishment and the future impact of its graduates. And this is no exception, and we'll come back to a focus on the students. But today's event is unique because it's also a celebration for us as a system of a long-held aspiration. The Dallas region was the largest and the fastest growing region in the country with no public law school. And there was a palpable sense of frustration expressed repeatedly to our Board of Regents. And the Vice Chairman of the Board is here today, Don Potts. And I'm representing a board that has stood through, supported me, supported this school for 15 years, when frankly there was some skepticism. Skepticism about whether the state had enough law schools, whether tort reform and changes in the law would cause the need for additional lawyers to go away. We've addressed every one of those issues over the past 15 years from the time that the board first asked me to work on this. We met with the American Bar Association. We were encouraged to be different 
but we were also told there was little precedent for a unique law school. But in the state of Texas, I will guarantee you, there is no one who asked us to create a law school just like all the others. They asked us to find the right location, the right leadership, and the right curriculum. Well, I think in downtown Dallas with our thriving legal community, the mentors you've heard from, and the support we've received from the courts and from law firms, we found the right location. We recruited a dean who had been a distinguished and successful and recognized federal judge, and when we recruited Royal Ferguson, we had the right leadership. And I also want a hats off to Ellen Pryor, who led us in the curricular innovations so that we could respond to what the community asked us and what the American Bar Association encouraged us to do, which was to look at a curriculum that would be more practical, that wouldn't rely on high stakes tests, that would involve the legal community, that would give students work experience and exposure, and that would aim to serve all Americans and Texans, not just those who are prepared to pay $500 an hour. And we set out to do that, and we have a lot of people to thank. The dean has already thanked many of you. I want to thank the city of Dallas, whose offer uh, for the former municipal building around the corner at Maine and Harwood has become a symbol of the permanence and the commitment of this law school. Uh, so thanks to all of you who have helped. Thanks for the innovations. And now back to a word about our students. We had faculty who left other distinguished law schools and careers and took a chance on us, and certainly staff who did the same and committed to help you, but you as students had to make the toughest early choices about whether this school would thrive and succeed, and we appreciate that. We wish you every success first on the upcoming bar exams and then in your career. But just a word about success. We also, and I strongly urged that we would interview as many students as possible, which is not the practice at many law schools. And why is that important? Well, a lawyer is an officer of the court. It's actually a representative of the basic system of justice in this country. And the idea that that choice would be made coming into law schools based on tests, almost anonymously, didn't make sense to me. So we've interviewed most of the students in this law school, and we have a great belief and a great hope that you can contribute to the community. But just remember, the success of your practice of the profession of law is not going to be your most high-priced client. It's going to be the honor and integrity with which you represent every client. And also remember where you sometimes decline a client. When you tell a client, no, I've given you good advice, you're choosing to operate in a way that I don't want to be associated with. Don't we all wish in retrospect that the highly trained lawyers who were advising Enron and who were advising Bernie Madoff had strongly and forcefully insisted that that is not legal, it is not proper, and then finally, if the client won't agree, you will achieve your greatest distinction in declining to represent such clients. Thank you. Best wishes for great success. We are very proud of this law school and of you, our first graduating <laughs> class. Thank you, Chancellor Jackson, for those heartfelt remarks and for your ardent, ardent leadership in bringing planning of a law school to fruition. I also want to thank Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs, Rosemary Haggett, who worked hand in hand beside him in the creation of this law school, and of course, Royal Ferguson for his inimitable leadership. I am in awe of you 72 more or less graduates. Uh, you are now at the levers, in my opinion, of democracy. More than any other profession, you'll be standing at the, at the reins of power in ways that no one else has. 
UNTD and this College of Law share much in common. Both campuses are diverse and populated with students <coughs> driven by individual determination. Both institutions are new and emerging, and the world needs our graduates with your resilience, your big dreams, and your aspirations. The world doesn't need another law school. It needs a law school like this one, affordable, with unique instructional models, all of which challenges, frankly, 140 years of legal education in this country. Each of you has worked incredibly hard, and you also appreciate the fact that the law, like so many other institutions in this world, are changing. No knowledge-based profession is immune to the consequences of fast computers and artificial intelligence. But you had faith, and you have faith. Faith in your own originality, faith in your own entrepreneurialism, faith that you can serve the rule of law as it should be practiced in the transracial America of the 21st century. I'm with you, and congratulations for reaching this incredible milestone. Wow, we made it, <laughs> finally. <clears throat> I never thought in a million years that I'd be up here on this stage giving this speech. It's an honor to be on this stage speaking to you right now, and it's a moment that I'll cherish forever. As many in here know, it takes a strong, support, strong and relentless support system and friends to make it through law school. I would like to thank my family and loved ones for being there for me. Without them, I would not be here. I'd especially like to thank my beautiful wife, Haley. She was there for me every step of the way, through thick and thin. Trust me, I know she is just as happy as I am today. <laughs> now to our fearless leader, Dean Ferguson. I still don't know how you do it. You show up every day to the school full of energy and a passion for what we are accomplishing here. I will never forget the days when the stress from finals was so thick within the law school that you could cut it through a knife. When everyone is walking around like zombies trying to figure out what the rules against perpetuities actually means. <laughs> Although I still don't completely understand what the rule against perpetuities actually means, <laughs> you are always there to provide that extra push. You're always there whenever we're trying to figure everything out. We, you would poke your head in and you would say, I believe in you. You will do great. You're a great American. <laughs> Thank you, Dean, for making all of this possible. You, sir, are a great American. <laughs> Next, this day would not be possible if not for the attorneys and judges within the Dallas legal community. Thank you for welcoming, welcoming our law school and the mission we are bringing to life here. You have given countless hours out of your busy schedules to be mentors, leaders, and provide inspiration for many of us. Your actions make me proud and excited to become part of such a prestigious and caring bar. Now, to my classmates. As the inaugural class of the UNT Dallas College of Law, we hold a unique position. Together, we hold a sacred responsibility. We hold the world on our shoulders and the future in our hands. For what we started here to last, we must be successful as individuals and as a class to prove to everyone that we are here to stay. We are a new breed of lawyer with endless potential. A breed of lawyer coming from a school that prepared us to go out and immediately affect change within our community. We are a breed of lawyer that will revolutionize the way people think about legal education. 
We are the inaugural class of the UNT Dallas College of Law. And together, we will be the change that is so much needed in our world today. Thank you. Now I would like to invite Mr. Van Buskirk to the stage for a special presentation. My name is John Van Buskirk. I am humbled and honored to be a member of this inaugural class of UNT Dallas College of Law. Our inaugural class started right here in the Majestic Theater on August the 10th, 2014. One year later, just before the convocation for the second class, we were still their only children. <laughs> one year later, marking that one year anniversary, on that date to memorialize the anniversary of these pioneers, a Texas flag was flown over the Capitol in Austin. I want to thank Texas State Senator Royce West and his staff for arranging to provide the Texas flag and certificate to commemorate the first anniversary of this inaugural class. At this time, I would like to ask Dean Royal Ferguson to accept this Texas flag and certificate to commemorate this first class filled with students who are first class. Thank you very much, John. John uh, was the oldest student in our inaugural class. <laughs> but let me tell you, there was none with more. <clears throat> there was no one with more youthful enthusiasm than John Van Buskirk. Thank you, John. It's now my pleasure to uh, introduce someone who has been a friend of mine since law school. Uh, David Epstein and I were at the University of Texas School of Law together. Uh, I, by the way, graduated from the University of Texas School of Law 50 years ago this month. Uh, David graduated the year before I did. Uh, by the way, David always looked like he was about 15 while he was in law school. <laughs> But he turned out to be the smartest guy in law school. And so although he was well-liked, you never liked to be in David's class because he ruined the curve. Uh, uh, David then went on to have an amazingly distinguished career uh, in legal education. He's been dean of two law schools. And he is considered, if not the finest contract professor in all of legal education, uh, he's in the top two. David called Ellen and I after he knew of our plans. He was a colleague of Ellen's at the SMU Dedman School of Law, and he said, I am willing to come and teach your first students, your inaugural class, I'm willing to teach both the day class and the night class in, uh, in contracts. He said, I will Tell you what I'll do, I'm teaching at uh, the University of Richmond School of Law, but I will leave from my class uh, on a uh, Wednesday. I will teach your Wednesday evening class, your Thursday morning class, your Thursday night class, and your Friday morning class, and then I'll go back to Richmond to continue to teach my class. And he said, all I want you to do is pay me my, my cost of transportation and lodging. And you know, David never missed one time flying halfway across the... <laughs> if 
flying halfway across the United States. David's a brilliant guy, uh, one of the best sense of humor ever. He even made me dress up in a chicken costume. Uh, he said he had served under nine deans and I was the first one that agreed to put on the chicken costume. Uh, uh, that, uh, you know, you only have so much dignity to go around. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, David Epstein, we value you, we thank you, we're grateful to you, and we appreciate your coming back and talking to your students. Thank you. As y'all have figured out, graduation ceremonies are kind of like Thanksgiving. Except there's, there's no turkey and there's no football. But it's just like Thanksgiving in that graduation ceremonies are a bunch of people giving thanks and a bunch of people giving the graduating class unneeded advice. <laughs> and, and so let me get my unneeded advice to the graduating class out of the way first. Unneeded advice. You need to celebrate today like you've never celebrated before. You need to party so hard that you sleep late tomorrow. But when you wake up tomorrow, you need to get back to studying on the bar exam. You need to study on that bar exam as hard as you studied for my contracts class in your first semester. Now, come fall, I want to watch the Cowboys winning. I want to watch, for a change, the Horns winning. And I want to go to the State Bar website and I want to see your name. And I want to open the Texas Bar Journal. And I want to see a picture of one of you as being the person taking the state bar, making the highest grade. Now, I can't, I can't help the Cowboys winning. Can't help the Horns winning. But if I can help you prepare for the bar, in any way, you call on me. You've got my email address. You've got my telephone. You need to work your ass off on the bar. <laughs> if I can be helpful. Okay, that's my unneeded advice. <laughs> now, my thank yous. Thank you to the senator. What you have done throughout your career as a public servant have benefited so many people. But I got to tell you, there's nothing that you have done that's going to benefit so many people as your work in establishing this law school. I thank you. <laughs> Second, of course, I, I want to thank Dean Ferguson for, for you know, accepting my offer and <laughs> for wearing the chicken suit and for being Royal Ferguson every single day. Uh, thank you, Dean Ferguson. And I want to thank my colleagues here, the other people that were teaching, put up with my grandstanding, put up with my unsolicited advice. I want to thank Dylan. I want to thank Eric, Ed, Tom, Cheryl. I'm grateful to you. But finally, I really want to thank you guys. I want to thank the class of 2017. You're the best. I mean, you really are the best. And it's not just because you submitted the best jokes of any class that I've taught. <laughs> although I can't really use those jokes at any other school. Uh, 
But your level of commitment, your level of commitment not to grades, but to becoming an effective lawyer was just unmatched in my long teaching career. Now, that's my thanks. Now, my last piece of business. Uh, now, it's your turn to give thanks. And not to me. Uh, you know, I remember that I required you to stand up at the last class and give me a standing ovation, so you thanked me. <laughs> but, you know, I've not only been a law student, uh, I was a husband of a law student. And I was a father of a law student. And let me tell you, being the husband of a law student is harder than being a law student. <laughs> being the father of a law student is harder than being a law student. And so, let me not ask, let me tell the class of 2017 to stand up to stand up, <laughs> stand up, and give a standing ovation to your family and friends. They deserve it. Good luck. Thank you, Professor Epstein. In the process of their education, our candidates have had the benefit of learning from and interacting with our excellent faculty. We're very proud of those who serve our students every day. Students who earn a semester grade point average above a 3.3 at the College of Law are placed on the Dean's List each semester. Each semester that they earn a 3.3, not, not every semester after that. <laughs> Special recognition is given to those students who've earned grades sufficient to place them on the Dean's List for every graded fall and spring semester in which they have enrolled. These honors are indicated by silver cords worn over academic regalia. Would all candidates with Dean's List honors for all semesters enrolled wearing a silver cord please rise and be recognized. Thank you. I now inv invite Al Ellis, followed by Professor Cheryl Watley, to recognize two very important student groups at the College of Law receiving cords today. Is this cool or what? <laughs> um, one of the things that has happened in this law school that I don't think we expected to happen uh, was a large amount of veterans uh, that became members of the class and classes after the inaugural class. Uh, and so it is my honor to recognize uh, those folks that have served our country in our military service. Everybody that has has received one of these red, white, and blue cords uh, for their regalia, and that identifies them as veterans. Uh, on, on a personal note, um, and this is not a criticism of any other students, but what a veteran brings to any institution, especially an educational institution like this, is the things that they have learned in the military. And you've seen it uh, in your uh, classmates who are veterans. Discipline, uh, the, just the automatic desire to be of service. That's what we're made of. That's why we got in the service in the first place. And that continues forward to today. And so for that discipline, that service, uh, that knowledge, that maturity, uh, we sincerely appreciate uh, those veterans who are part of our class and part of our uh, faculty. So for all the members of the uh, student body who are veterans, will you please stand and be recognized by all of us here? Please stand. Thank you. For those on our staff and our faculty who are veterans, please stand and be recognized. And we, of course, we recognize our dean who like to, talks about how he t took a, t carried a typewriter in Vietnam while some of us carried a rifle, but he's still a veteran by God. <laughs> and then all of you in the audience, and this audience is amazing. 
Uh, please stand if you were a veteran or your family member is a veteran and be recognized. We want to honor all of you, all the veterans. Thank you so very much for your service. Uh, Joshua, I can assure you that after 45 years, I don't know what the rule of perpetuities is, uh, but maybe you'll find out in 45 years. Uh, and then I ask that we all just, uh, to ourselves, give a silent prayer for those that we have placed in harm's way. Please bring them back safely, uh, without harm, and alive and well for their families. And thanks to each and one of you for being here. Dr. Gerald, I'm going off script. This is amazing. And I just want each and every one of you to know that for those of us on this podium stage, we so appreciate, and it's just, the audience is amazing. And we're all here to recognize you, our inaugural graduates. Part of our inaugural class, of course, is comprised of people who have served in law enforcement and who are first responders. And as a token of our appreciation for that service, we ask that all candidates who have served in law enforcement and or as first responders stand and you will recognize them because they are wearing the royal blue cords. Our law enforcement officers and first responders. You have answered a call for duty that makes each of our lives better. We thank you for your willingness to do the unthinkable and to stand as guardians of our safety, a service that you perform with care, compassion, and professionalism. Thank you. Thank you, Ellen, Al, and Cheryl. Thank you so much. It's now my privilege uh, to introduce uh, the retired chair of the Committee on Higher Education in the Texas House of Representatives, Dan Branch. There's no need for a history lesson here or a lesson in government. We all know that there are uh, two branches in the legislature. There's the Senate and there's the House. And we all know that you don't get anything done unless both the Senate and the House agree. So, for example, you don't get to have a law school unless the Senate and the House agree. David did a nice job of mentioning uh, Senator West's contributions in starting our law school. They are remarkable. But he needed a partner. He needed a partner in the House. And it so happened that maybe as a Democrat, he might look for a partner who is Republican. Maybe in this era, the most amazing thing could happen a Republican and a Democrat could agree on something. Uh, and so, uh, uh, Royce and Dan got together and they made this happen. And it was a partnership, a rare and remarkable and wonderful partnership. There would not be a law school here without this partnership, without a Republican and a Democrat working together to do something special. Dan Branch is a, an awesome, awesome lawyer. He's with a great law firm, Winstead. He's had a great record of success in the law and in the practice. And he was probably one of the best chairmen in the history of the uh, Texas House in generations. Uh, a remarkable man who got together with another remarkable man to, uh, to make something really amazing happen. So I get to introduce Dan and tell Dan, thank you. Thank you for all you've done. And Dan gets to interview, introduce Royce. And uh, what a team. What a great team. The two best partners I've seen in a long time. It's a great honor to introduce to you Dan Branch. Thank you, Dean Ferguson, and, and uh, distinguished guests, and parents, and family members, and graduates. Um, uh, Dean Ferguson, you are uh, a great American, <laughs> and a great Texan, and a great founding dean. And I think that this law school 
along with uh, those who have spoken and the great leadership of your chancellor, Lee Jackson, uh, owes you a lot. Uh, this, this college of law uh, has achieved much as a result of the selection that Lee made in picking you to be the founding dean. Uh, since uh, Dean Ferguson retired from his uh, federal judge, a lifetime appointment, when we talk about sacrifice here that David made and others have made to uh, serve you all and, and to make this happen, um, not too many people giving up lifetime federal appointments. So thank you, Dean. Uh, UNT College of Law has adopted an innovative, practical approach to legal education along with his great uh, partner, Ellen, uh, known as learning the law by doing the law. And this College of Law has attracted students from all walks of life and is now the nation's third most diverse law school. This College of Law has emerged as one of our state's most affordable schools with tuition that is less than half the cost of most Texas public law schools and less than one third of the cost of some private law schools. And it is my hope as has already been alluded to from uh, Professor Epstein, it is my hope that the law students from the UNT Dallas College of Law will soon pass the State Bar of Texas uh, at rates that exceed the expectations and evidence the vitality and importance of this institution. So it's not just about you passing the bar, it's about you carrying the mantle for this new law school and all of us. So heed the words of Professor Epstein. Please join me in thanking Dean Ferguson for his leadership of the UNT Dallas College of Law. Today is a great day, as has been mentioned, uh, for this inaugural class of the UNT Dallas College of Law. Uh, for law students and supportive spouses, parents, and loved ones, today is the fulfillment of a journey that started uh, three years ago at least and has required diligence to study the law's many subjects. Um, when I was in law school, the phrase was that the law was a jealous mistress. Devotion uh, to learn the law's finer points and dedication to balance the law's demands with the needs of family, work, and life. And you're about to enter a profession uh, one that's been uh, mentioned as uh, have, being very close to what is considered powerful in democracy. And I think someone worth studying, I always hand out uh, to uh, new law students that come uh, to work with me, uh, The Path of the Law by uh, Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes. And this was a judge that my judge, Chief Justice Jack Pope, the late Chief Justice Jack Pope, who just passed it at 103 and 10 months earlier this year, uh, studied a lot. And uh, this is the justice who said that words were the skin of human thought. And what he said in his words about the study of law, he said, we study law, when we study law, we are not studying a mystery, but a well-known profession. The reason why it is a profession, why people will pay lawyers to argue for them or advise them, is that in societies like ours, the whole power of the state will be put forth, if necessary, to carry out a judge's judgments and decrees. People want to know under what circumstances and how far they will run the risk of coming against what is so much stronger than themselves, state power. The object of our study then is prediction the prediction of the incidence of the public force through the instrumentality of the courts. So congratulations on this major milestone in your personal and your professional lives. Today is also a great day for the state of Texas and for our city and for the system. Uh, and, and what for many officials has been mentioned 15 years ago was a dream of, of this day and this class finally getting to this moment. And I can tell you that in 2009, when Royce and I were working on this after uh, coming up short in 2005 and 2007, uh, Texas had four public law schools, but none of them were in the largest metropolitan area of the state and the largest economic engine in the state, 
the uh, Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. Our state had not created a new law school in 40 years and had added just 600 new law student seats in that time. Even as our state had, uh, our population had boomed from 11 to 25 and what is now fast approaching 28 million. So in 2009, a coalition of leaders, local officials and state lawmakers united around a common vision that you all fulfill today, the creation of a public law school in Dallas. In support of that vision, the system, which has begun assembling a law library as far back as 1979, contributed important institutional leadership, expertise, and resources. And the city of Dallas has been mentioned, donated the old municipal building, which is now looking fab, I would say. <laughs> At one point when things were looking really rough, I told the chancellor, I said, get a photographer, put him in the, uh, get him to lay down in the gutter on Harwood and make that building look like the Taj Mahal and I can sell this thing in the Texas house. And he did and we did. At the Texas Capitol in Austin, the legislature passed legislation, uh, Senate Bill 956 and, and, and House Bill 59, which I laid on the table so that my, my good senator could, uh, we could pass the Senate bill. And uh, the governor ultimately signed uh, that legislation in June and authorized the creation of this law school. And, and uh, in, in another part of our partnership, I couldn't get the, uh, I got the funding in the bill in 2009. Um, we couldn't get it in the Senate. Um, I, ha I had the bill to get the funding in 2013, and we couldn't get it across the goal line, and Royce picked it up in 2015 and got 56, a little bit of change, 56 million to redo the uh, municipal building. So in 2009, it was State Senator Royce West, and my privilege to author this legislation. In fact, uh, it was approximately eight years ago this week that we were hammering out the differences in conference committee. This is always a fun time of the year for people like Royce uh, because he's uh, in the middle of all the important stuff in the legis legislature, and so to come back and focus on this class is, is quite a sacrifice. Um, this inaugural hooding ceremony for you all is a testament to what Texans can accomplish when we work together. Um, I worked hard for a man who, who uh, from, the, from our city who ultimately became president. But when he was becoming uh, governor, he had a, a saying in his first inaugural, what Texans can dream, Texans can do. And this law school is a testament to that statement. Uh, for more people than you know, you are li the living fulfillment of a dream come true. Um, sitting among you this morning, future legal scholars, litigators, counselors, business owners, uh, entrepreneurs, and perhaps even future lawmakers. And as you go forth today, I encourage you to remember that there's more that unites us than divides us, and that you are the inheritors of an important legacy, that great things are possible when we work together. Now, to the, to the task at hand. In the Texas legislature, Royce West and I did not always see eye to eye. In fact, he's a lot taller than me, so I always had to look up in order to... Um, but we were colleagues, and we shared a constituency. I had downtown and uptown, and so did Royce West. And so we overlapped in the middle of this, the heart of the city where this school is. And so we worked together, whether that was for Baylor Hospital or for the city of Dallas or the county or for UNT Dallas. And we became friends, and we disagreed vehemently at times on issues like school finance or the top 10% rule. Uh, but we were always civil, and we enjoyed a, a shared history. We came to learn that uh, both of us had been president of student bodies at our respected alma maters. We both had large families, and I got to know Carol, and, and he got to know Stacy. In fact, the first time I remember meeting Royce before I was in the legislature, he had just come in. He was speaking at a real estate council uh, award ceremony and got up and said, I love my wife, but I also like her. And that stuck with me. And so uh, we share both a love and a like for our wives. Uh, and they're both saints for supporting 
uh, our public service. Uh, David's comments are, it's harder to be a wife or a spouse of a legislator or children of legislators than it is to be a legislator. Both of us are uh, practical, well, let me say also, I shared the tragedy and was at the moving day for his son, Remarcus. <clears throat> and I'll, I'll never forget that. And I'll never forget Remarcus. And both of us are practicing attorneys. Uh, the profession that today, you take another important step toward joining. Both Royce and I believe deeply in the future of Dallas and North Texas, and we were willing to work together across party lines to advance our community. And this was not without some risk. There were a few of my friends and alums at, South, at Southern Methodist University who, um, let's just say, they weren't so sure this was such a good idea. And there were some really fine lawyers in this town and uh, who, who disagreed with the vision that Chancellor Jackson and, and Royce and I had. And there was a lot of white papers out there about why we didn't need another law school in America. And so um, this was not without sacrifice. But Royce, since, is not one to back down from challenges. <laughs> and since winning his first election to the Texas Senate 25 years ago, Senator West has authored a number of bills advancing our state and community, often on a bipartisan basis, including such legislative accomplishments as this, the creation of this school, expanding access to higher education, fighting uh, redlining a financial institution, and I could go on and on. He and I share the fact that uh, we were recognized by Texas Monthly as being pretty good legislators. Uh, that actually helps in his party. Um, <laughs> Lee, no, and I, not, not so much. <laughs> um, and again this week, Senator West demonstrated his legislative leadership. In the last few days, Royce has um, played a critical leading role in brokering a really, really, really tough problem and an important agreement uh, to shore up the Dallas police and, and, and fire pension. And when no one's happy, that means it's probably a pretty good bill. Um, and Senator West has also ensured the passage in both the Senate and the House of his Senate Bill 12, which increases the safety of our law enforcement officers and by providing for them body armor and bulletproof vests. Uh, Texas Monthly has described Royce as one of our state's most powerful lawmakers writing that he was a liberal Democrat who wins by working behind the scenes with the GOP majority while remaining true to his principles. It's a great pleasure for me to introduce my partner in this endeavor, tonight's, this morning's keynote speaker, my fellow founder of this law school, my longtime friend and my brother, Royce West. Dan, thank you very much for that introduction. Dan is correct. We are from two separate and distinct political parties. Dan is correct when he says that we, have, we had issues that we both felt very strong about, financing of public schools, top 10%, and Dan, I must tell you that even though you opposed me in top 10 percent, it's still the law of the state of Texas. <laughs> <laughs> but let me say this in all candor. Your role in making this law school a reality, and this day possible, will always be a part of the history of the University of North Texas at Dallas College of Law. I'd ask the candidates and audience to stand and give Dan Branch a standing ovation for a job well done. You, 
You owe me on that one, okay? <laughs> I also want to say to Chancellor Jackson, President Mung, Dean Ferguson, other platform guests, faculty, staff, and distinguishing, distinguished graduating class of 2017, good morning. Let me see, I, I'm going to take that out of my speech because that's already been said, that, that's already been said. You know, as I prepared for this day, I couldn't help but be excited. In fact, I got up at 4 o'clock this morning for some strange reason. A sense of accomplishment overtook my thoughts. I began to think of this occasion the very first day that we passed the legislation creating this law school, the very first day. You may ask why, because this day, class of 2017, is a culmination of a dream come true for so many that you pictured right here in this particular facility was in our mind when we created this university. And I want to say to each and every one of you, there was a lot of sacrifice that went into getting you to this particular point. You and your loved ones have sacrificed and worked countless hours towards the achievement of this milestone in your life. You individually and collectively will likewise be <coughs> inextricably intertwined with your soon to be alma mater, UNTD College of Law. It's so overwhelming, it's so overwhelming this particular day that I just want to say to each and every one of you, it's time. It's time for you to take your rightful place in this legal profession. This day is the most suspicious day in your journey in this college of law. Let me put it in proper perspective. You represent the inaugural class of the first professional school the city of Dallas for its uh, first four-year comprehensive university. You represent the first. You are one of 72, 71 students that applied back in 2014. And of one of 71, 72 students that were enrolled in the inaugural class. You to be congratulated for getting to this particular point. Further, you represent a conclave of peers ranging in age from 24 to seven, who, <laughs> who brought this law school program expertise and extensive backgrounds, including but not limited to medicine, medical backgrounds, pharmacy, the military, law enforcement, business, paralegal services, insurance, entrepreneurship, and on and on and on. I mention these backgrounds because of the varying nature of the maturity of the classes and the different perspectives that were brought to bear on issues of interpretation of law, be it common law, be it law, constitutional law, or otherwise. You had the ability to bring those perspectives in class. You represent a very diverse student body one of the most diverse in the entire country, which means that in many instances, you've got the opportunity to interact with people from different backgrounds that you never had the opportunity to interact with, preparing you to serve clients from all backgrounds. But realistically, we must pause because you didn't get to this point in your life alone. We've already acknowledged your loved ones. You may, you may have known that there was also a cohort of civic, business, community, and even religious leaders that worked tirelessly behind the scene to provide this opportunity for you today. What you may not realize, and I want to take a few moments because I think it's important that you hear and hopefully internalize what I'm about to say. But for proximate cause, right? <laughs> Not concurrent cause, but proximate cause. But for the Southern Dallas Feasibility Study Community Task Force, we would not be here today. 
but for the leadership of two important individuals that are seated on this stage, we would not be here today. Even though they have been acknowledged, I want to acknowledge them once again. You see, the steadied hand of a guy that would be willing to put on a chicken suit <laughs> has calmed us through choppy waters. And that's our dean, our inaugural dean, Dean Ferguson, and I'd ask you to stand and give him a standing ovation for a job well done. And of course, I'm going to let y'all sit down because you're getting ready to get up one more time. <laughs> and of course, our UNT System Chancellor, Lee Jackson, Ch Chancellor par excellence who has tended his notice of retirement after 15 years of dedication and exceptional service and many, many arguments with me, okay? <laughs> Dean, excuse me, Chancellor. Just because you are retiring, you cannot erase my telephone number because I'm going to be calling you on several occasions. Let's give our chancellor a standing ovation for a job well done. But amidst the celebration of this time of day, I want to be somewhat nostalgic also. Standing here seeing so many faces on this first commencement and hooding ceremonies just rewarding. But there were those that I went before us that were part of that South Dallas Task Force, and I want to make certain that their names are spoken today also, one of which we will have a memorial service, a funeral service today for Don Hill, former city councilman Don Hill. <laughs> former city councilperson Barbara Mallory Carraway. Both Don Hill and Barbara Mallory Carraway carried the water, if you will, for us in order to get the UNT Dallas campus that obviously is the campus that this law school is tied to. The members of the task force that did yeoman work when there were those in the legislature that didn't want to see a u public university in Dallas. Hollis Brashear, Lucius Wagner, former chancellor of the Dallas County Community College, Bill Winrick, former county commissioner Roy Orr, and, and, and many others were involved in that particular task force that put in place the university of North Texas at Dallas that ultimately led to the creation of this particular law school. I also want to take this moment to remind you of the history of how UNT became the partner as opposed to any other system. It was former Chancellor Alfred Hurley, Virginia Wheelers, UNT visionaries then, who came to the table and presented their case as to why UNT would be the right partner. I never will forget Dr. Wheelis and Mrs. Charlotte Berry cornering me and Chancellor and Dean, they put their hands on the hips, okay? And basically said, why shouldn't it be UNT? I said, I don't know, okay? <laughs> and it became UNT. That's the history. And the creation of that UNT campus was a catalyst for everything that came after. So we had the first system breaking on 9-9 of 99. And then the real fight began as it relates to creating the law school. Dan has chronicled those particular years accurately, and we were able to create a law school. But because of the fortitude and tenacity of those who would not accept just any old law school education, for you, as the inaugural class and for the first graduates you have and will build strong and proud traditions that will stand to guide and lead this law school, 
and future lawyers from this law school. Tradition, tradition, simply defined as the transmission of knowledge, opinions, doctrines, customs, practices from generation to generation for so long that it almost becomes the force of law. UNT Dallas College of Law and you as its first inaugural class have and will create traditions of excellence and a legacy of legal success and promise so strong that the students behind you must adhere to it, otherwise we should prosecute them for violating the law of this university, of this law school. I stand where you ultimately will stand. I am also, and most, perhaps foremost, an attorney. As many of us are here today are attorneys. I practice law here in Dallas and around the state. Yes, I still practice law. You know, this is a part of the speech where one often employs humor about lawyers. I'm not going to do that. But it's a time when many of our democratic institutions in this country are under a great deal of stress that all of us understand and appreciate. You as lawyers must be the guardians of our democratic institutions. I'm reminded of the words of Thomas Jefferson in his first inaugural address. Freedom of religion, freedom of the press, freedom of the person under the protection of habeas corpus, and trials by juries impartially selected, these principles form the bright consolation which has gone before us and guided our steps through an age of revolution and reformation. The wisdom of our sages and the blood of our heroes and have been devoted to their attainment. They should be the creed for us going forward. This profession, the law, the one that will, you will join soon is a noble one. Listen closely. We help people solve complex problems. We help resolve disputes. We keep criminals off the street. We make certain that victims are treated fairly. We keep the innocent free. And when we find that the innocent have been incarcerated, we do what we can in order to free the innocent. And most of all, we are the guardian of this republic. When I say I'm an attorney, I say with pride. I know that soon, real soon, you'll say the same thing. I want you to say with pride when asked, and you'll be asked. I want you to say, I'm a graduate from the University of North Texas at Dallas College of Law. When you walk out of a courtroom victorious, when you resolve a community issue, assist a person with a legal concern, I want people to know that you're a graduate of the University of North Texas at Dallas College of Law. You're next. duty is to pass the bar. You know, we've had a lot of turbulence, and let's talk about the elephant in the room. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. Don't worry about that. I'm telling you now, don't worry about that. Well, who is he to tell me not to worry about it? The same person that created the university, the law school, is telling you not to worry about it. We will get that done. You will be able, to the Texas Supreme Court, who believes in this law school, to take the bar. And we'll get all of that turbulence. You, you, you've been on airplanes, and you get the turbulence. You know good turbulence from bad turbulence. It's still turbulence. And ultimately, the plan lands. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here, by the way. Uh, 
but the plan lands. And we've got a great pilot that's at the head of this airline, this airplane, that's going to help make certain that it lands. So your job is to party like it's 1990. No, that's, you can't say that. <laughs> your job today is to party, OK? And then get back to work. Let me give you some statistics. When I begin to look at these statistics of bar passage in 2017, February bar passage, 68.75% of the takers passed. In July of 2016, 82% of the takers passed. All right. You know what the goal is, 100%. Each and every one of you have been provided a legal education that we've spoken about up here that prepares you to bust a cap. What you do, I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> but I want you to get 100 on the exam, OK? But understand, not only the importance of passing in a bar for you personally and your family, but also for the law school. Remember I talked about tradition? We have to set the bar high in terms of what we expect of students, the one L's and the two L's that are here that will be watching you and the results. I, I just tell you I graduated from U of H in 1979 and got my bar, bar results back on Halloween. I'm serious, I got, got it back on Halloween. Some people got tricked. Others got treated, OK? <laughs> I was fortunate to be treated. And in closing, let me tell you a story. I'm not the smartest person in the world, and I know it. And I know that being here is not about me. You being there is not about you. Uh, I go to Matthew's in a, a parable with a master. Gave his servants talents. Each and every one of you have been provided a talent. All of us have been provided talents. And you know the, the parable, the master comes back and asks what you've done with the talents and the one that just buried the talent, you know what happened to him and the ones that use the talents, you know what happened to them. I took a bar exam in 1979 at the University of Houston. The second day of the bar exam, I had an apple, tuna fish sandwich, I remember, okay, sitting there in preparation for that afternoon's test, which was going to be the Texas portion on criminal procedure. I opened up the book, my criminal procedure book, just to kind of get ahead of it, and I began reading what is a person entitled to bail. Lo and behold, I go into the test and open up the test for criminal procedure. Guess what the question was? When is a person entitled to bail? Now tell me. What's the odds of that happening? <laughs> right. I didn't recognize then, but I recognize now that it wasn't about me in terms of passing the bar. It's about what he wanted me to do in order to be put in a place in order to assist you to be where you are today. One other thing in closing. When we created the University of North Texas at Dallas, it was on a Wednesday night. I was on my way home from Austin when I got word that the House finally passed <laughs> the University of North Texas at Dallas. I began to pray. Check this out. The prayer was, God, thank you for allowing me to assist you for generations yet unborn. Let me say that again. God, thank you for allowing me to assist you for generations 
in perpetuity. <laughs> Graduating class of 2017, I'm so proud to be here with you. You are a dream realized by so many of us on this particular day. You are inextricably intertwined with the history of our law school. I'm glad to call you a colleague. I'm glad to know that you will be a, the first graduates. And when you uh, ask the question, what the law school did you graduate from? You will say, you will say, you will say what? Thank you very much. Well, I, uh, I love the history lessons, guys. Thank you both so much. Uh, before we go to our next, uh, next matter on the agenda, I want to take one moment of personal privilege, if I could. Uh, when uh, my wife, uh, Marceline, and I got married, and when she said, for better or worse, I don't know that she understood that could have meant starting a new law school. Uh, uh, she has uh, put up with my early morning breakfasts, uh, my late night meetings, my, um, uh, my weekends at the office. Uh, she has been uh, the, uh, the best person in the world for me. I tell Marceline, you're not perfect but you are perfect for me. And uh, you can use that, fellas. <laughs> uh, it works for a while, uh, <clears throat> but uh, uh, she's on to me now. But thank you, sweetheart. Thank you so much. It is now my honor to certify the candidates for the Juris Doctor. Will the candidates who are to receive Juris Doctor please rise and remain standing. President Mong, on behalf of the law faculty, I certify to you that those candidates who will complete all of their academic requirements prescribed by the faculty of the law school are entitled to receive their degree. It's time. <clears throat> Dean, by the virtue of the authority vested by the law in the Board of Regents of the University of North Texas system, I confer upon each of you after successful completion of all academic requirements, the degree of Juris Doctor, with all the rights, privileges, responsibilities, and obligations thereunto, I offer you my sincerest congratulations, and it is now time for the candidates to take the stage for the Hooding pres presentation and you may now be seated. It is now time to recognize our candidates individually by the ceremonial presentation of their academic hoods. Like judicial robes, the academic regalia is considered to be of ecclesiastical origins. Although the hood was derived from a lay garment and adopted centuries ago by monks, clergy, and university students. The hood at academic institutions is lined in silk with the colors of the university granting the degree. During the processional, you saw a number of different colors on academic hoods because the stage party represents a number of different 
academic institutions. The hoods will be placed on the students today and they contain the colors of UNT Dallas, blue, green, and silver. The hoods are trimmed, the hoods are trimmed with velvet in the color that represents the area of learning for which the degree is obtained, mirrored by purple lining and chevrons on the academic gown representing the field of law. I ask the following to come forward to join me in conducting the hooding. Professor Thomas Perkins, selected by the students as their hooding professor. President Mong, Associate Dean Valencia, who will read the names of the candidates. Associate Dean Pryor, who will present our congratulations. And Assistant Deans James Greenan, Robinowich, and Dr. Gerald, who will assist. Will the candidates from the College of Law receiving the Juris Doctor please come forward as your name is called to receive your academic hood and recognition. As ushers stand by your row, please stand and come to the stage. Candidates, after you have crossed the stage and had your special photo opportunity, please return to your seat and be seated under the direction of the registrar staff. Ladies and gentlemen, friends, family, and loved ones of our graduates, I invite you to please not hold your applause. <laughs> You're going first. Taj Anthony Walker. Joshua Griffin. John Van Buskirk. Mitch Abeta. Imran Sean Akhtar. <laughs> Megan Altobelli. <laughs> Gilbert J. Altum III. Nader R. Bobby. Matthew Altbrook. Rowena Rivera Baker. Connie M. Beckerley. That's all right. Tracy Lynn Bennett. <laughs> Alfred D. Blue the third. Kaysen Cagle. Alicia Christine Calhoun. Joe N. Carrington, Jr. Woo! 
Alicia Daniela Castillo. <clears throat> Melinda Simpson Cheney. <clears throat> Billy Wayne Clark. Lauren Michelle Cross. Chris Cude. Arnesia Beatrice Davis Armstrong. Carlos Clemente Diaz. <laughs> Haley Rebecca Dunn. <laughs> Kristen Nicole James. Dana Kellogg. <laughs> Joseph Lafleur. <laughs> Diane Lisa Landry O'Brien. Jasmine Long. <laughs> Cynthia Lucero. <laughs> Jeffrey Madu Jr. <laughs> <laughs> Sophia Mai. Kelsey Basha Marsh. Emery Ann Martinez. Raul Mijares, Jr. <laughs> Victoria Catherine Elliott. <laughs> Allison Marie Etherly. <laughs> Patrick Gallagher. All right, let's do this. Lucas Zacarias Sebastian Garcia. Brittany Marie Gomez. Miguel. Michael A. Graves. Adam Joseph Greenup. <laughs> J. 
Charles Ray Gurley Jr. Courtney Nicole Haining. Shane Justin Hazelton. Carlos Hernandez. Congratulations. Jeffrey Paul Hindman. <laughs> Ashlea Howard. <laughs> John Joseph Huerta. Nicholas James Alexandre Roder. <laughs> Toya White. <laughs> Rafael Rene Valbuena. Jason Thomas. <laughs> Ryan Cody Taylor. <laughs> Jonathan Stormont. William Austin Stacy Marcy Michelle Spivey Lauren Marie Smith Jody L. Sharp. <laughs> Fabiola Segovia. <laughs> Deborah Jean Gilliland Schmidt. Soyla Monroy. <laughs> Clifford Ray Moore the third. <laughs> Connor Jacob Moore. Carolyn Kimberly Okorafor. <laughs> Isaac Ohenny Oak Cherry. <laughs> Pr 
Priya Govinji. Alexandria Christina Perez. Jacqueline Perez. Maria Andra Rokavatan. Ann Roberts. Mandy Rodriguez. Great guys, you just look great. We're so proud of you. You know, the, uh, this country is built on the rule of law. Uh, I love this quote when uh, Thomas Paine wrote Common Sense. He said, in a monarchy, the king is law, but in a democracy, the law is king, and you will be the guardians of the law which means that you will protect the foundation of this great democracy. We are really proud of you. I can't tell you how proud we are and how inspired we've been by your triumphs, your struggles, your amazing group of people. We really do love you. And now, uh, I do want to echo what uh, Professor Epstein said. Uh, we couldn't have done this you and me and everybody here, we couldn't have done this without our wives and our husbands, without our mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters, without our children. We couldn't have done it without them. I think they deserve another round of applause. You know, uh, Senator West is, is right. You are now a part of the foundational history of this law school. It's a pretty impressive place to be. Uh, we'll always remember you and we'll always be grateful to you. So this concludes the hooding ceremony for UNT Dallas College of Law. Thank you all, every one of you, for being a part of this joyous occasion. We will now ask you to remain uh, seated, if you could, while the stage party, people here and the students there, while we have all left the auditorium and gone over to the law school, and we will meet you over there uh, at our reception. Uh, it's just an amazing day. It, uh, it, uh, it takes my breath away, uh, but we're just getting started, guys. We're just getting started. Thank you so much.